2020 was significant because we were dealing with COVID um, on the onset. And then we had hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta. Laura devastated the southwestern portion of our state. Major hurricane, category four status, Laura. More than 700,000 people in Louisiana and Texas without electricity. And the damage is extensive. In Lake Charles, Louisiana, homes are underwater. Delta went up through the central part of our state, uh, all the way up to north Louisiana. And here comes another hurricane. Delta on track to make landfall south of Lake Charles later today in nearly the same spot Hurricane Laura struck just six weeks ago. Zeta hit just six days before the election in the southeastern portion. Here comes Zeta ripping ashore in southeast Louisiana, the third hurricane to make landfall in the state in just two months. The challenge was, would we be able to have power at our um, polling locations in southeast Louisiana? Southwest, we had to relocate things. We were able to do that early. Uh, but the thing is, we, uh, under Louisiana law, we can move elections, but you can't move a federal election, and 2020 was a federal election. Ida is tearing a path of destruction through Louisiana tonight. We spent an hour driving through the hardest hit neighborhoods, and we can tell you it is feet of mud and floodwaters for miles and miles. You know, elections in and of themselves are hard to, to do. It's a human resource component. We're dependent upon so many different people uh, to come together uh, all at one time um, to, to perfect an election and to give the people the right to exercise, um, in my opinion, their God-given right to vote. We needed a lot of resources and Secretary Ardwan recognized that and pulled together um, staff and outside resources to try to accommodate this need for allowing people the right to exercise their vote. Of course, with polling locations having to be changed, there was focus on communications to the voters so they knew exactly where they could go to exercise their voting rights. Having the team, the task force, created this obligation of everyone to know what everyone else was doing. We were able to assign tasks to the correct person the first time, which meant efficiency in our deliberations, efficiency in our execution, and then ultimately getting the result we wanted in the best way possible. The task force individuals were basically told this has to happen. And if you can't make it happen, we need to find another way to make it happen. So you had additional layers of emergency personnel to contact to make things work. It just shows that each role is, is uh, just as important as the next. to have to go into a parish where everything's devastated. The people are devastated. The elections officials are devastated. Their families are devastated. And you're in there to pick up the pieces and to make sure that we can conduct the election. I was truly inspired on how the members of the task force and the members of uh, the Secretary of State's office themselves were able to handle the disaster on a personal level while also taking care of business. It affects everybody on an emotional level, especially when, you, when you're interacting with the people that are affected, when you're seeing their will to get the job done under any circumstances. We saw devastation to people's personal property, their homes and their businesses and their, their offices. It was very heart-wrenching to have to ask someone to fulfill their duties when they're going through so much personal devastation. You know, elections involve real people and people have problems after storms. The shortages of people, the illnesses where the offices, we had offices, registrar's offices or clerk's offices where everyone had COVID or was exposed to COVID and the operations team had to jump in and be the registrar, be the clerk, keep the process going. We were able to um, make certain that everyone was on the same page. We were able to bring up barriers uh, and then other folks on 
uh, in other divisions or in other agencies were, in 2020 at least were able to help us overcome those barriers. I mean it is just so powerful when you have all these brains together but remember a lot of that time we were having to do this via Zoom or our telephones and so learning collaboration even in those difficulties was really important for the team to keep moving but when you get a powerhouse of people in a room together I really do think you can do just about anything. Well in 2020 we had the full force of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security as well as my agency as well as the National Guard. Uh, and others, and uh, my bringing in uh, the former Adjutant General, um, General Curtis, um, who had a tremendous amount of experience having led the National Guard through many uh, disasters. Uh, we, we knew what resources were there, um, so we were able to learn that, and then we were able to re-implement that in 2021, even though we didn't have the support of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security or any other state agencies. Uh, we were pretty much left on our own. The scale of the task force grew exponentially. So I think when we first got together uh, in September of 2020, we started with some key directors and election staff and quickly realized that the resources that we would need would expand far outside of our agency. So we ended up bringing in partners from the, you know, CISA, um, the fire marshal, state police, DOTD, and then not only government partners, but we also had to partner with utility companies like Entergy and AT&T who provided services in these devastated areas relating to power and communication services. So the task force is very scalable. Um, it could go uh, every, from every aspect of uh, just uh, internal staff, um, and we scaled it all the way out to uh, even utilizing Louisiana's uh, Public Service Commission. It's about teamwork and pulling your staff together and figuring out who the best people are for the job. Every problem that was brought about by the emergency, whether it was the COVID emergency or the hurricanes, that is not easy to do as the emergencies got closer and closer to the election date. And um, ultimately, I feel like we did a good job. It's not until you see people work under extreme circumstances that you find what the real meaning of true grit is and commitment and determination. And I couldn't be more thankful for the people that work for me. And I felt like during those times, they weren't really working for me. We were all working with each other. It's truly been a phenomenal experience. Um, one I hope we don't have to live through again, but one that I know that we we have created a, a process by which we can make sure that our elections can still be run on time, um, even if we can't move them.